Amen. Amen. How many is ready for church tonight? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I feel God already. When I came into the on the church premises, I went to my office and I was sitting back there and I was looking at what all God's going to be doing in the, in the near future here at the Good News Chapter Night. When I was getting excited about watching how things are just unfolding, how God's using ministries now and ministries and, and just using that to reach other people and to fill His house. Amen. Aren't you glad God's still on the throne? Amen. Amen. If you got a prayer request tonight by uplifted hand, just hold that hand up high. Signify God, you know the need. How I many knows God already knows what your need is? Amen. Amen. If you got a special need, you know that, that you need God to touch, lift both hands. Amen. God sees it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. If you would, let's all stand. Amen. Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. God, we see every prayer request here that was lifted and signified by hands tonight. God, you know every heart. You know every situation. Father God, we ask right now that your spirit God, will go right where they are. God, and continue to touch and send angels to war on the behalf of each and every one, every hand that was raised and every family involved. God, we pray tonight, God, that your spirit begin to move through this place, God. Lord, like I already felt it move this morning, God, let it continue to move in here tonight. Father God, that you will touch hearts and minds and souls, God. Lord, that you will change lives, God, that they won't leave this place the same way they came in. Father God, I, God, we come into the atmosphere of expectancy, God, to see a miracle start to happen tonight. Father God, that only you know how to do. God, that you would break every chain. God, you would break every bondage. God, that you would set free and deliver, God, the oppressed and oppressed. God, the people the enemy is trying to bring down but tonight. Father God, they get the victory through Christ Jesus. God, that every chain is broken. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, we pray for an outpouring of your spirit tonight upon all flesh, God. And we give you praise and glory and honor for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church celebrate and give God a hand. If you got your time and offer, get ready to give it to the Lord. Amen. Father, bless this offering. Bless the giver. Bless those who don't have to give, Father, the next time they come to your house. Father God, they'll be multiplied, God, and you would have, God, every little bit is given, God, that you would use it for your glory, because do as much when you're in it. God, stretch and use it for your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we humbly pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was given to the Lord tonight. Good morning, same old road for miles and miles.
about ready to move. That's good. Yes, sir. Say so. Leviticus 18.23 Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. And now y'all are looking at me confused. So let's pray. Lord, I come before you tonight as a son, as the father of a thing. Yes. Father, that you would make known to us the mystery of your will, according yes. to your good pleasure, which you have purposed in yourself, that you would give us more spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of this church's understanding be in light. Yes, sir. That we may know what is the hope of your calling, what are the yes. riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us for who believe, yes. according yes. to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. <laughs> And set him at your right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And have put all things under your feet, and gave yourself to be the head yes. over all the things to the church, yes. which is the body, uh -huh. the fullness of Christ that filleth all in all. I ask you, Father, to help me convey what I have heard and to perform what I have seen. Let my lips be an instrument in which your heart is broken into language. Yeah. If you so choose to use me in any other course of the Spirit tonight, I'll make myself a Yes. Leviticus 18, 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Such a strange opening scripture. And everybody's looking around wondering who he's preaching to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I had originally turned down this opportunity to minister tonight because I usually feel the need to wait until the Spirit tells me. Because God usually deals with me on a particular subject for months and sometimes years at a time. What I'm going to talk to you about tonight, this is, I've, I've studied this for years. But quite honestly, I don't feel that I'm called to be a weekly pulpit minister. My calling lies more in proclaiming a change. And I did take notes because it's kind of spur of the moment. I've got like 10 pages worth of notes, so if I keep looking down, it is what it is. Um, I look at things differently than other people, and a lot of the time I'm misunderstood. I've got very few people that I talk to, and because of that reason, I keep my circle small, not because I'm unfriendly, but because I don't care about your business. I'm about the Father's business. Amen. I love each and every one of you dearly. You're wonderful. But if I knew everything about you personally, and I come to you telling you I've got a word from God, would you really receive it? That's good. Does the Spirit talk to me about you? Of course He does. He shows me y'all all the time when I pray for you. And if, if any of you know me, I usually confirm what the Lord's already been talking to you about. But this half afternoon, however, on my way home from church, I told Ray, give me another time. I can do it later, as I usually do. Mr. Procrastinator here. But on the way home, I just felt the cloak of the anointing fall on me. So I called Ray back and I said, you know what, I'm just going to, I'll go ahead and do it. And the Holy Spirit said, it's time. Yes. It's time. Yes. Not necessarily my time, but our time. Yes, that's good, sir. A now time. Yes, sir. We become too complacent with where we are, too satisfied with what we have. We get our dose of the Holy Ghost, call it church, and go home. But the Holy Spirit isn't a drug to get your fix on. He's a person with emotions yes, and a job. Yeah, 
Right, that's good. The Bible speaks of hindering and grieving the Spirit. We yes. grieve Him in our action, yes. but we hinder Him in our inaction. Wow, that's, that's so good, sir. Let me clarify something. The Antichrist is not just a person. It's an idea, it's an agenda, and it's a mindset. Yes. When you hinder the Spirit from performing His job, you basically become His enemy and an Antichrist. Amen. <laughs> Everything the Holy Spirit does is with intention and with purpose. Yes. And He is a God of order. Amen. That's where the fivefold ministry comes into play. Yes. The fivefold the fivefold ministry was established as an order for the operation of the church. Yes. Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. You don't have to pull it up. I'll just read it. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. We think that's where the fivefold come from, but I'm going to break it down for you tonight. But it says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. All right, so let's go back. For the perfecting of the saints. Yes. For the work of the ministry. Yes. And for the edifying of the body of Christ. Right. Until we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, yes, that we henceforth be no more children, yes. tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up yes. unto, up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. That's good, sir. It says, for the perfecting of the saints, the Holy Spirit uses each office as a way to perfect the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. But 1 Corinthians 14, 40 says, let all things be done decently and in Amen. order. Yes. Now back to my opening scripture. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Jesus said he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Right. That was a law he had to fulfill. As a prophetic voice, let me tell you, church, Jesus can't be intimate with sheep. As a church, we cannot continue to remain sheep. We weren't called to be sheep. Well, we were called to be the bride, and from the bride to become sons. Yes. It takes a bride because only a woman can give milk and nurture the little babies that come yes. in. But we have to eventually become sons because you can't take the headship of Christ and put it on a woman's body. That's good. That's all right, sir. For too long, we've changed diapers and made bottles for people that have been saved for 10, 20, and 30 years. Too long. The Holy Spirit's fed up with what's taking place. And we've come to a point now where adults are still breastfeeding and going no deeper in the Word than Christ crucified, buried, and resurrected. No further than asking for repentance every time we have an altar call. Because all we heard is sin preaching, not the full gospel. The gospel says that now we are the sons of God. Yes. And if sons, then we should be a replication of Jesus himself. And if a manifested son... Yeah. Then we shouldn't act like babies. We should be about our Father's business. Yeah. So much so that when the world asks us to show them the Father, we can boldly say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. Too long we played with the gospel, and too long we sat back and hoped God would do something, always waiting on God to move. All the while, God's waiting on us to move. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. But let me be clear, God don't move. Right. How can he be everywhere at all times if he moves? What, happen, what happens is we move in him. We yes. catch another revelation of who he is and who we are yes. in him. Yes. We see a new side of God that we've never seen before. His spirit isn't moving. His spirit isn't trying to come down. His spirit is trying to get out. Amen. He's trying to manifest himself through us. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, we can't get off the bottom. My God. I love you, church. I do. And I'm telling you, I wrote all this in a matter of two hours. Um, I do, but we're starving as a people. An adult body cannot be sustained by just milk. It can't. We need the fivefold to rise up and the church to grow up and start establishing for themselves so the kingdom can expand. Amen. Glory to God. Ray spoke some this morning about callings, and I'm just going to expound a little bit on that, and then I'm going to let the Holy Spirit have his way. I'm going to run this 
I could go deep into this, super deep, but I'm just going to give you a baseline. There's five offices. The fivefold ministry wasn't established when Paul spoke it in Ephesians. Right. The fivefold ministry was established from the beginning, right. but pulled together under one roof in the Mosaic Tabernacle. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a long read, but not too bad. But if you turn to Numbers chapter 7, verse 7. <laughs> And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof over the altar and all the vessels thereof and had anointed them and sanctified them that the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers who were the princes of the tribes and were over them that were numbered offered. And they brought their offering before the Lord six covered wagons and 12 oxen. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm telling you it's in here. Yes. A wagon for two of the princes and for each one an ox, and they brought them before the tabernacle. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take it of them that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt give them unto the Levites to every man according to his service. And Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levites. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon, according to their service. Four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Merarah, according to their service. Under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. But under the sons of Kohath, he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. And then turn to Numbers 4, 16. And to the office of an office, and to the office of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, pertaineth the oil for the light, and the sweet incense, the daily meat offering, and the anointing oil, and the oversight of all the tabernacle, and of all that therein is in the sanctuary, and in the vessels thereof. In the Old Testament, we just seen all five offices being mentioned, but we overlook it because we haven't dug far enough. Eleazar the apostle, Numbers chapter four sixteen, it tells you exactly what his office is. Ithamar the prophet, his name means coast of palms, like palm trees. Gershon, his name means a refugee or called out. Merari. His name means bitter. And then you have Kohath, and his name means to ally oneself or assemble. Gershon, meaning called out, represents the evangelists. They carried the linens and the cloths of the tabernacle, the coverings. They were given one wagon and two oxen. Their burden is to show there's something underneath. Yes. There's more. They love to see new converts. They are the gatherers. And their heart's cry is the same as Rachel's. Give me children, lest I die. Yes. The driving force behind an evangelist is to birth more children. If you look at the way the tabernacle was set up, Ephraim and Manasseh were encamped behind um, the tribe, the Gershon. Remember, re, uh, resembling the double portion blessing. That's why they've got one wagon, two oxen. They get the double portion blessing. Constantly trying to show the world the beauty of God. They're always excited, always trying to attract people, excited about getting to sing a song or get behind the pulpit so they can tell somebody about Jesus. Marara, meaning bitter and strong, represents the pastor. They carry the structure of the church, the boards and the sockets. Their burden is twice as much as the evangelist. That's why they get two wagons and four oxen. They hold up and support the role of Gershon. Holding in the people he's gathered and instructing and teaching. The role of a pastor is hard. It's not bitter because it's lonely. It's bitter because you have to deal with the boards of the tabernacle. The pastor is responsible for the placement and the establishment of the boards. That's the good. boards are the people. Yes. Amen. Jeremiah 3.15. And I will give you pastors <laughs> according to my heart, yes. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yes. Marari didn't just throw boards on the ground and let them build themselves. 
Moroni placed them exactly where they needed to go. Right. He knew their purpose and what their use was. The pastor is a people person, always trying to encourage and help the flock, feeding and teaching the flock so they can grow into adulthood. The boards were made of wood. People are just like wood. If they get rained on, they swell up. If it gets a little too hot, they bend and twist. Right. If you get too much pressure on, too much weight, they'll crack and break. The pastor's role is to set in place each person to ensure they get the help and support, to love and care for each individual piece. How can the structure be whole if pieces are missing? Wow. He leaves the nine and nine to go find the one lost sheep. Yeah. That verse isn't talking about lost people. He's, the Bible specifically calls the lost one a sheep. Right. A pastor's role isn't to evangelize, it's to build people. Yeah. Kohath, meaning to ally, one, ally oneself or assembly, Kohath wasn't given any wagons or any oxen. His burden was to carry the furniture on his shoulders. Kohath is the teacher in the fivefold ministry. Not a Sunday school teacher or a youth teacher. The teacher is an actual office. Yes. The teacher sees the deeper things in the Word. He sees the hidden things, but nobody understands them until the church begins to move. His office manifests to explain and expound the new revelations we see in God, to teach the church and explain why we're going where we're going or how we got here. Right. Isaiah 30, 20, and 21. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed in the corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when yes. you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Uh -huh. Teachers get more excited about revelation than anybody, yet no one understands them until the church moves. They see the hidden things because they go to the most holy place and they can only describe what they have seen because others haven't gone as deep into the tabernacle behind the veil. And Eleazar, meaning God, has helped, represents the pe uh, the apostle. And to the office of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest pertaining the oil for the light and the sweet incense, and the daily meat offering, and the anointing oil, and the oversight of all the tabernacle, of all that therein is, in the sanctuary, and in the vessels thereof. He's responsible for the oversight of the tabernacle. The apostle maintains the doctrine, establishes leadership. He's the father figure. He has oversight over all the church. When the doctrine gets corrupted, he corrects it. Yes. When leadership gets out of order, he corrects it. Yes. Look at the writings of Paul. He established churches, established the doctrine, established the leadership. He reproved, reproved rebuked, and exhorted with all long suffering and doctrine. Yes. You can find, the more I study, the more I dig, I see Paul in that one verse. But now we get to Ithamar the prophet. And his name means Coast of Palms. It took a long time for me to figure out what in the world Coast of Palms meant pertaining to the tabernacle. But the palm tree is one of the first to bloom when it springs, when, when spring comes. The life of a prophet allows him to experience a new thing in God before anybody else. It's a lonely life because no one understands him because they haven't got to where he is yet. Moreira and Gershon only took down the tabernacle at the hand of Ithamar. Let me repeat that. Moreira and Gershon moved the tabernacle, dismantled it, and built it only when Ithamar said to. Right. When it's time for the church to move, God sends an Ithamar. The summation of his call is in Jeremiah 1.10. See, I have set thee this day, see, I have set this, have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down. Yes. And to destroy, and to throw down, but to build and to plant. That's good. When the church is about to change direction, he comes in to destroy the same old, same old. Yeah. To throw down what has been, and to build and plant the new thing God yes. is doing. He tells her, Sean and Moreira, it's time to start dismantling the tabernacle, because we're going somewhere. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. And when we arrive, he tells them it's time to start planting and building. Yes. That's good. And as the ithamar of this house, at my hand now, I declare that we are moving. Yes, sir. We have settled in this place far too long. The cloud has ascended yes. and our direction has changed. We've sat on our hands idly for too long and we've sat without a vision for too long. Wow. And this is not enough. Yes. While I was studying and stuff, I heard the Spirit of the God. The Spirit of God talked to me. And I, I mean, I took this down too. But this is what the Spirit of the Lord said. This ain't what Trey said. Now, I, I hope y'all already took off and I took up an offering. Because you probably ain't going to get one after this. Well, I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. This afternoon, He said, I gave you quail because you asked and you've grown sick of it. But from here on out, until you get to the next destination, it's manna. <coughs> You'll learn to depend on me as your source, and you'll call unto me for answers. I say unto you this day, repent and turn, for you've gone astray and thought that this wilderness was home. But I say unto you this night, turn and walk, for my work is not complete yet. Wow. Ask of me. Many are lost and looking for direction, but ask of me. Don't wonder any longer. I've raised up a people among you to direct your path, to guide and teach you, and to perfect my people. Don't wait any longer. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Yes. I say unto you, choose this day, lest my glory depart, and I write Ichabod across the sanctuary. Yes, sir. And that's all I have for tonight as far as teaching. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do because do what he wants to do because there's a he's got a work that he wants to do there's a couple people that really need to find out well I'll put it to you like this there's people in here that think they have a calling but it hasn't been confirmed to them yet yes. and if you'll just play something soft I struggled so long so long with trying to find out who I was in God until that day came out and I always look for confirmation in either in his word or in names. Right. And I looked up that baby's name. And that baby's name means ordering respect and honor because of the office that you hold. And that baby was dropped in my lap and the Lord told me, he said, I will give you houses that you did not build. But he'll also give you babies that you did not have. Children that you did not birth. If we're available, we'll make ourselves available. But right now, we've got a church. We're blind, church. We're, we've lost our way. Some of you, you might think I'm crazy. We have lost our way. There is more than just Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. So much more. We hold offices, and yet we have neglected, neglected who we are in those offices. I know I have. I have. It took me almost 17 years to figure out who I was, man. To figure out who I was. You feel the draw, but you feel the pull of God. But the enemy comes in. Every time you feel like you know something, he comes in and robs you of it. And you look for affirmation. But it takes other people. It takes other people to affirm you sometimes. We're a family church. We're a family. But tonight I've come to affirm some people. Come on. Brother Colton, I need you to stand up. You remind me so much of myself. I see you tossed to and fro different times. Tossed to and fro here, there, and yonder. I know what you want, but this is you need to make God real to you, Colton. When God first called me into the ministry, I, I was probably 13, 14 years old, and I wouldn't say that he called me into the ministry, but he gave me a, just a little nugget. I'm getting ready to separate you, Trevor. 
getting ready to separate you. And I, my mom had talked to me about going to Bible college. That's when, that was before, what was it, East Coast Bible College, it burnt down or whatever. But my mom talked to me about going to Bible college, and I was like, hey, I really don't want to go to Bible college. So I prayed about it, and I was probably 12 or 13 years old. And I went in my room, jumped, me and my brother had a bunk bed, so I jumped on my bunk bed, cold, and I flipped the Bible open, and the very first verse that came out to me, the very first verse I looked at was in Galatians. And that's, it says, For I, never, I neither received it of man, nor was I taught but by revelation yes. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. A little bit of what's in me is in you, Colton. And you, you look at some of these other, other ministers and wonder, how do they do it? It's by the Holy Ghost. Yes. You have to make him real to you, Colton. Yes, sir. It doesn't mean really your mama's definition, your dad's definition of God, of Jesus, your grandma's definition, that's not who he is to you. You need to seek him and find out who he is. Yeah, that's good. Dear Heavenly dreams have been lost and like you'll never see them and I looked at you Kim and I seen brokenness in you but I come to tell you tonight that your dreams ain't fell to the ground what he has shown you will come to pass about a month ago no month and a half it was the first or second day that Alan had started working with me I went to go get material and on the way back I had a vision of you, Paul, and I saw you saying, why, God, why, when, Lord, when? Why and when is an enemy. Yes, sir. Why comes from your past. When is for your future. Well, we operate in now. Yes, sir. Some things in your life, Paul, is what's holding you back. There's certain things that you, and I'm, I'm not going to call it indoctrination because we only operate to the point that we are taught, right? Yes, sir. It's good. But the deeper you go, Paul, the more God is allowing you to operate. Yeah. Yes. And Paul, I'm telling you, sometimes I see you come down to the altar and I just see sorrow on your face because I know, I know you know there's more out there, but you don't know how to get there. Yes. <laughs> Paul, I'm here to tell you, I'm here as a minister. I am here as a prophet of God. My, my God, listen. Jeremiah, they called him the weeping prophet. They called him the weeping prophet. Not because he was a crybaby. He was the weeping prophet because he would declare a thing over Israel. And then he would go intercede for him and beg God not to do it. Don't do it, God. Paul, I'm a weeping prophet because I love you, dude. I love you again, both. And I'm telling you, I'm here. Jeremiah would not leave the people. And I'm telling you, I have declared a thing. I do not want to see God write Ichabod across this sanctuary. Do you even know what Ichabod means? The glory has departed, right? It has departed. 
I'm not going to leave. God's placed me here. And as the Ithamar of this church, I cannot leave. I can't fall. I'm going to show you what I see in the spirit realm. All right? This is what I see. Stand right here. Turn around. Ray, come here. Ray, your call as a pastor, sir, you are to build people, man. And this is what I've seen. Take, this is what I've seen in the spirit realm. Start walking. For years, they have helped push you through ministry. But I need you to turn around. Now, you're going to start pushing them out of ministry.
you a father and a mother, to give you the heart of a father and a mother. Yes. But as of now, stretch forth your tent and drive the stakes a little deeper. Because the youth group that he sent you over is about to expand. Stretch the tents a little further and drop the stakes a little deeper because they're coming.
This morning at the end of the sermon, well, at the end of the message, the Holy Spirit showed me a vision of it. And what I seen was that you hadn't really been ordained or that. All right? And he showed me as the Ithamar, the prophet of hell, taking a hold and anointing you as the pastor. And when I do that, Ray, when I do that, there's going to be a heart transplant. And the Ray that you are now ain't going to be the same Ray.
I'm not trying to set you aside and set you apart and make you you, but this is her heart's desire is I want to know it. I want to know it. God, if only the church would be like that. Everybody. Quit being sheep and become a son. So that you can be the father. Yes, sir. He didn't wait on you, Renee. Poor Rabbi Shee there. Yes, I've prepared a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. But no more shall you sit on your hands idly. For my words, I have given you the dominion over the works of my hands. Go out and perform what I have sent you to do. In the name of Jesus. set up where to leave a message and I'm Steve, I believe you are the liaison of this <laughs> to watch. It's still you to watch, to maintain. And 
doesn't come without the anointing, you're not doing it alone. Because you know what the name is? Hazor means? God is helped. Call up the sun. Father, we come before you right now. Thank you for the word. Yeah, no, no, no. 